As difficult as this is to admit, I want viewers and subscribers to Next Level Carpentry to hear it straight from me. When a major life event like retirement comes up, it's important to be forthright about it. And, sad but true, this old toolbox has reached the point in its life when it's time to retire. For anyone who thought it was me who's ready to retire, I apologize for the clickbait thumbnail and introduction. I'm not the energizer bunny of carpentry that I once was, but I still got a lot of nail pounding and board cutting left in me. But this old toolbox, that's another matter. So stay with me to the end of this video when I talk about the fate of this old faithful friend, okay? The biggest issue with this toolbox from the get-go has been the handle. And while it looks cool, in my humble opinion, and it works well, uh, the piece of burl that I used and the way I did the joinery for aesthetics isn't strong enough for the abuses encountered on a job site. Once upon a time, while I was out on a job site, uh, somebody on a landscaping crew dropped something on the handle and broke it, and nobody ever fessed up to it. And subsequent repairs to it have kind of failed, just from carrying a heavy load and uh, moving around the different job sites. Besides that, the rigors of life for a toolbox on a job site, like water and UV damage, and uh, work rash that puts divots, dents, and chips in the wood, have taken a toll on its overall appearance. As difficult as this is to talk about, there's good news here. When I built this toolbox over 10 years ago, back in January of 2008, I anticipated the day that this guy would be ready to be put out to pasture. And thankfully, made a pair of identical tool totes while I was at it. So I'm happy to say that this retirement party consists of just switching the stuff from the old toolbox to the new one, and it'll be all ready to go to back to work. How sweet is that? I'll use this as a segue for creating the leather liner that I put in this toolbox. This one has a plastic one in it. It's been okay, but I think the leather's just kind of classy. So I'm gonna dive into that, show you how to make the liner, and then come back and move the stuff from the top of the toolbox from one to the other. And I think a new toolbox needs a new liner. I like to use leather because it's classy and matches the overall look and feel of the toolbox. So I just go to my trusty shelves full of boxes and pull down the one that says leather. And it just so happens I've got a nice piece of this cowhide that's just the right size for the bottom of that box. The first step for getting a liner with a perfect fit is to start out with a piece of thin, flat cardboard like this and trim it to get an airtight fit in the box. That way I know my new liner will fit nice and tight on all the edges. I'm taking a little poker tool here to lift this out of there because it fits so tight. And having this for a template allows me to get an accurate size without using a tape measure. Next, I take a scrap of laminate from a previous project and cut it to precisely the same size as my cardboard template. And I start the process by truing up one edge to make sure it's perfectly straight. Because laminate tends to slip under a rip fence no matter how tight it is to the table. I use this little auxiliary piece of sheet metal that clips into the fence and keeps the laminate from sliding underneath. And I just want to make sure the scrap is wider than the template to start off with. Then I set the fence to match the template, plus just a frog's hair. This end of the laminate scrap looks perfectly lined up to the template, which should be square, so I just have to cut the other end. And if this is not square, I'm in trouble because that means my master carpenter toolbox isn't square and there's just something wrong with that.
Perfecto. Happy with the size of this piece. I'll take a demanding sanding block. I'm going to use 120 grit and just take the sharp uh, chippy edges off of this. Just takes a couple licks. And let's see how I did with the fit. I think I was just slightly too optimistic. So I'll take a little more off of this. The cardboard has soft edges, where the edges of this are rigid, so I'll have to downsize it just a little. And you can check out the video where I show how to make these blocks now that you've seen how handy they are for stuff like this. I love it. And this whole selection of grits fits right in a drawer for easy access anytime I need them. That airtight fit is what will make this liner stay in place. Now that I'm satisfied with the size, I can trim this piece of leather so that it'll fit that laminate and cover the whole thing. I've got a decent margin all the way around, so I'm taking a welder's pencil actually here. I'm going to mark it with this soapstone. And I'm sure there's an official tool for marking like that, but I don't do leather all day every day, so I don't have it. I'm just going to trim this a little bit proud of the lines all the way around with a pair of snips. I meant a pair of scissors. With the leather the right size, I'll spray adhesive on here. I like to use this 3M High Strength 90. They also make something called Super 77, but I like that this goes on a little heavier. Um, and you can see I've had this can for a while, but it still sprays great. There's a high, medium, and low setting. For the fan, I'll just use the medium. And this is a cohesive, so I spray both surfaces. And I'm using this nasty old cardboard because you don't want to put this stuff anywhere. You don't want to keep it. Yep, let's go to high. The, the low, medium, and high dictate how wide the fan is. You can see how it kind of fans out. Give it a liberal coat going both ways. Carefully setting this aside so that it doesn't fold over on itself. I'll get this other one and zoom in a little bit so you can see the spray pattern. Maybe you can see the spray pattern. That probably didn't show up too good because the glue is white and the laminate is light colored. But I will tell you, the secret to getting a can to last, this is almost nine and a half years old, still spraying just fine. Just clean that tip off, turn the can upside down, and spray till it's clear. Hold the can upside down the whole time put the lid back on and store it in the cupboard just like this. Storing it this way with the tube empty means that any sediment ends up on the inside of the top of the can, 
not in the bottom where it gets sucked up into the straw to plug it up. I hope 3M wants me to tell you that because I would buy a lot more of this stuff if I didn't use this method for storing it. Do the same thing with spray cans and that'll last forever too. This is from 2005, 14 years old and that'll spray just like new. And because this is a cohesive and not an adhesive, it only sticks to itself and the irony of it is it's ready when it's dry. So it's not sticking to my knuckles on either one of these. So it's set and ready to go. I know I've just got a small margin on this piece. So I'll stretch it across there, pull it across the middle, and stretch the corners and ends into place so everything lays flat. Just made it here on the end. Get that corner wrinkle free and proud. And then use a firm roller to get it to really stick. You could also use contact cement for something like this. And I'm not sure what a leather worker would tell you to use, but whatever it is, use that if you don't like this. The last step is to just trim the leather flush to the laminate. And leather must have a knot in it. And just for grins, I'll put the date on here. 22 June 2019. Last thing I'll do Again, is to take a sanding block, just get any fuzz off the edge of that leather on the edges, and then slip it into the box where that airtight fit will hold it in place. Well, after that little side trip, I'm ready to start moving tools into their new home. So here goes, I guess uh, we'll move the stuff from the top of the toolbox over. Um, first thing is dirty 3M earplugs. They work really good. They get a lot of use, so that makes them dirty. By the way, uh, you can take these little orange things off. With earplugs, about eight bucks a pair. Um, I just send these through the washing machine. Actually, Mrs. Next Level Carpentry puts them through the washing machine, so I can use and reuse those. They work great. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find a link to this um, uh, it's Abitix. I call this my 200 mile an hour tape. It's uh, duct tape. It's super sticky. They use this stuff for uh, asbestos abatement, putting up uh, the plastic tenting and stuff for, con uh, for confinement. But I keep a roll on this uh, on hand because it is super strong stuff and use it for all sorts of stuff. I think I'll zoom in for the rest of this. This will be a tricky part to show. I made this little tote for chisels. Uh, they're held in with a special tapered slot and then a rare earth magnet. And you can see this thing's in pretty rough shape. I'll clean it up and uh, get it installed in the new toolbox. But uh, the custom fit shape is important where the shanks of these go in here and then the magnet keeps them in place. Makes them easy access but uh, the tips are uh, protected for safety and they don't get dull. I've got a scratch all in there also. On the back side, I just screwed a, a washer on so that I can keep these two magnets. This one's kind of a trolling magnet for finding stuff if you dangle it on a string. And then here's one of the um, special super strong magnets I use for various things like finding screws when I'm removing sheetrock. There's a whole video about that. But um, this thing um, has a bed rail fastener mortised into the end and then a couple screws in the end of the toolbox. I've got to transfer those screws to the new toolbox for the permanent installation of this. But you can see that it just, the two, um, the fastener here slides onto those screws and then this drops down and stays in place. 
it acts as a handy divider in the toolbox. For now, I'm just going to set this in the other toolbox. It just goes right down here on the end. Works great. I'm trying to figure out how to shoot and show this all at the same time. Um, I've got my S-Wing 16 ounce hammer. It's my favorite. Fits in a corner there. I keep this little Irwin pull saw handy. This has got a lot of abuse. You can see that the blade's all kinked up for the stuff I end up doing with that that I shouldn't be doing, but uh, sometimes that's what you got to do to get out of a jam. And I keep shims in the toolbox. Um, use those all the time for all sorts of stuff. And I keep these uh, regular door setting shims, but I make these myself so that they have a feather edge on them. I'll uh, show how to, the jig I use for making those at some point. Uh, and they're different because most shims are kind of blunt, but these are they, they sharpen down to a feather, which makes them extra useful. And then I've got these hardwood, I call them razor shims. Same thing. Uh, the end is almost sharp enough to cut yourself, but it's, it's a feather edge. And because they're hardwood, um, they're super effective because you can really pound on them uh, if you need to. But those guys stay in the toolbox, a permanent fixture. I also use shims for stir sticks and uh, smoothing caulk and who knows what else, so they're not always just for shimming. Over in the back corner here, I keep a bottle of glue and I use Type Bond 2 glue uh, in the toolbox because normally it's for, uh, for doing trim work and I like the fast grab of the Type Bond 2 and it doesn't need to be waterproof. Keep a little uh, plastic can of 3-in-1 oil, and I don't know if a can that's made of plastic is actually a can, but I keep this bottle around uh, for uh, tool adjustment. It works for door hardware, uh, door hinges when they squeak, just everything. Keep that handy. And I've got a Bosch Red Dot Laser. I keep this instead of a plumb bob for obvious reasons. It's small, compact, and uh, it's worth taking. In the toolbox, if I got to do a lot of laser work, I'll bring my uh, big Bosch uh, green line laser. But that guy fits in the corner back here with the 200 mile an hour tape. A uh, pair of safety glasses. Now that I'm using click readers more, I'm uh, using these less, but I keep a pair of safety glasses in case I'm cutting or grinding or get into a bind and don't have my safety glasses that come in the tools. Uh, I always keep a clamp. These uh, Irwin quick grip clamps work really nice. They're a small size. They're pretty effective for little stuff. If I've got a dedicated clamping project, I'll generally bring more and bigger clamps. But that guy stows in there pretty well. <clears throat> I never go anywhere without these location wires. I did a video of how to do through wall location. These are pieces of piano wire with a sharpened tip. I keep three lengths. The longest one just fits in the toolbox and then the other two are a little uh, shorter so they're stiffer for pushing through harder stuff. You can check out that video to see why these are so important and useful. Let me go in there. While I was thinking about doing this video, it kind of dawned on me how different uh, are the tools that I carry now than from when I first made this toolbox and from earlier days in carpentry. There's a lot more uh, about drilling and fasteners going on. Uh, I keep this Hitachi index just because I like the size. Uh, the bits aren't wonderful, they're pretty brittle, and I usually replace them with Irwin bits when these Hitachis break. But I like the size and compactness of this drill index. So that's a keeper. Like I said, uh, the things that I carry are more fastener oriented, oriented these days. In the old days, I was keeping more nails and things, but now uh, everything has a different kind of screw and a different size. So I've got this DeWalt kit, and inside are all manner of different tips for when I break them, lose them, or need them. Uh, a couple Allen wrenches, an extra magnetic holder or two in here, and then all the Torx drive tips, square drive, all sorts of stuff. Every time 
somebody comes out with a new product that seems like they come out with a new fastener and I like to be prepared so this little DeWalt kit does a great job uh, more fastener oriented stuff I've got these two assortments of uh, tips this is all kinds of torques allen heads etc another magnetic holder and this is more of the same it's a socket set some more tips a little um, adapter for a quarter inch drive sockets that's pretty handy um, I'm considering um, weeding these out and not taking them everywhere I go they're pretty useful but I can usually tell when I have a job that's going to require that at the bottom of the pile that goes in this end of the toolbox I keep a catch-all for sockets uh, and these are snappy drill bits they allow uh, a quick change uh, fitting on the end but then they clamp really tight on these small drill bits so I can use these either in my impact driver that has that quick change chuck or I can use them in a drill either way but the important thing is that the bits are held firmly and they're removable so I can just take this out and replace the bit when I break this and notice I said when I break it not if I break it um, there's a, a, a quick uh, release chuck to 3 8 drive adapter there uh, there's a quarter inch one in here somewhere and then um, these are just standard SAE size sockets uh, I don't have metric because I don't generally need those for metric stuff but I'd get them if I did this is just in a plastic case uh, the most important part of this selection of things here is probably the snappy bits you can hardly see that anymore I've got these little um, plastic cases there from Midway they're made for rifle brass but they work great for this and in this I have my indispensable snappy bit selection um, these I like because of the large set screw that's used for adjusting the length of the bit I'm doing that all the time for different bit sizes and different screw lengths so I've got the whole selection of those there's this one that's made special for Torx head trim screws it's got a little bitty countersink on there and that's invaluable for doing nice trim work uh, there's spare bits in there an allen wrench for adjusting the length and then I keep a, a large countersink bit in here that needs to be used in a drill but it's good machine steel and so I can cut some pretty nasty stuff with that if need be there's that last but not least in the top here is uh, the VIX bit selection that jump out of the box if you're not careful but I've got these um, ranging from a microscopic screw size all the way up to these for a number 12 hinge screw um, invaluable if you don't know what a VIX bit is uh, find out and uh, you'll you'll get a set of these but they're basically self-centering bits you just put this in a in a hole in a hinge give it a push and it drills a self-centered hole those are invaluable for uh, doing door hardware anyways that kind of rounds out the selection here all this stuff stacks up in the toolbox like so and I actually have a little space left over here for job specific things should I need something like a roller or a drill when I go into the house I can just toss it in here and take it in with me one of the key features of this toolbox that might not be so obvious but besides the fact that the style and the joinery um, make it a marketing piece when I go out on a when I go out onto a job and people see me walk up with this um, that's the best sales brochure you can ever have um, but a key feature that's not so obvious is the fact that it has a pull-out drawer uh, the drawer is where I keep just a whole bunch of stuff kind of a catch-all thing uh, but every single thing in here is super important at some point I get out on a job and I've got some little task to do that I didn't know I had to do I'm always digging into this drawer to get me out of a bind when I built these toolboxes I only built one uh, divider set to fit in this drawer I thought well by the time I move into that new toolbox I might want to make something different so I didn't bother making two of these dividers so I'm just going to lift this out of here and stick it in the other drawer even though that'll make these tools get kind of jumbled up as I transfer them and here's the pristine drawer on the new toolbox
I'll zoom in a little bit and show you the joinery. This is a through tenon that holds the side of the drawer to the front. It's a, a wedged through tenon. Those are ebony wedges. I didn't elaborate on the toolbox, but uh, there's only a few screws in here. I used it to hold the bottom of the tool cabinet on with screws. And you can see it here. The bottom is screwed on. I screwed it on because I figured at some point I'd have to replace it. Obviously, the hardware is screwed on. As are the drawer glides, because these are functional. I didn't want to use dovetail glides or something that was going to be less functional on a job site. Uh, this full extension is necessary to make the drawer useful. So I used metal hardware, even though I'm kind of touting craftsmanship on the rest of the toolbox. I'll tell you a little story. Uh, the oak for, for these two toolboxes came from the same tree, and the tree grew in a place called Sand Creek, Wyoming. Um, I cut this probably back in 1993 or so and um, have had pieces of it to use, but I could show you within 100 feet where that tree grew that this toolbox came from. So all the oak is, uh, it's a white oak or a burr oak. I'm not sh exactly sure of what it is. The walnut burl for the handle, both handles were made from pieces of the same burl. That burl's got a story. Uh, it grew on a street called West Boulevard in Rapid City. A friend's dad uh, got a hold of this burl, who knows, back in the late 1970s. Um, had it stored and dried for years, took it to Arizona. He was going to make stuff out of the burl. That never happened. He passed away, and the burl ended up in my hands um, oh, probably 20 years ago. It found its home in these handles. So um, that's a cool story with that. And um, the last story for the toolbox is this maple is from a tree that grew at uh, next door to 218 East St. Pat. Some of you might remember me mentioning a guy named Howard um, who never wanted to run a shovel because his hands didn't work right. Well, this was Howard's tree. Uh, when he had to cut it down, I asked him if I could have the wood. He was elated that it would find a new home and it made its way into the drawers of this toolbox. And I could just pull these drawers out to make the switch. Yeah, that should work pretty good. Uh, oh yeah, last but not least, the walnut for this divider uh, is from the same tree that the burl for the handle came from. But I'll just lift it out and slip it in here. The drawers were made at the same time, so they're identical. I'll start with the big stuff for this in the back corner here. And uh, I've got a Sterrett 100 foot uh, fast drive chalk line. And with a laser these days, a chalk line is a little less important than it once was. This has got a quick release deal. Pull out, um, the string just pulls out without the handle spinning around. That's common these days, but back when I bought this, uh, Sterrett was kind of a trendsetter for that new idea. And then it's got the, the quick retrieve. This is kind of messed up because it sits in that drawer and the chalk gets into the gearbox and settles down because I don't use it that much. But um, the other important thing about this is that for the string, I actually use a heavy fly line backer. Uh, rather than the fuzzy strings that you get uh, with a chalk line or for the replacements. Uh, fly line backer makes a very sharp, fine line, and it's, it's durable, and um, it's easy to replace. Plus, you can get quite a bit of feet of it in there. It's embarrassing how hard that is to turn, but the box is really full, and it's got chalk in the gearbox. Anyways, that's my go-to chalk line, um, a Zircon stud finder. Uh, I like this uh, model. It works well. Um, some of the new ones with the readout screen are too big to fit in my little drawer. So even if they have wonderful features, they don't fit. They're useless uh, or they don't work for me in this box. So I carry that one. Uh, I've got snap stick, uh, zipper um, snap and zipper lubricant. This stuff works great as a wax uh, on tools, uh, rip fences and stuff, anything that's sticky, um, door hardware, all sorts of things. Uh, got to keep a stick of that wax around. I've got two types. This is a old, old one. Um, door ease, I think that was. Same purpose, different size. And then 
um, keep a tube of Gorilla Super Glue glue, not Gorilla Glue. Uh, that's a handy size and decent functioning properties. And then this is why I always use the stick fast activator because of the size of the can. Uh, fits in my toolbox here. Whereas other ones, like the Star Bond, takes up too much room in the drawer and too much room in the nail pouch. So I go with the stick fast activator. All right, I'll move to this compartment here. And uh, in that one, I kind of got to go bottom up. I keep uh, some random sandpaper discs just because they're tough sandpaper. They fit in the drawer. They're easy to carry. And it gives me a selection of grits for whatever I might run into on the job. I keep a stack of those in there. Spare pair of earplugs. And then I keep tape. This is 3M one inch masking tape. The only stuff worth having. Uh, a roll of electrical tape for cord repairs and who knows what. And then um, a roll of Teflon tape for sealing up air and water fittings. And then I got a pair of uh, carpenter stair gauges or rafter gauges. These are the only kind I like to have. There's a lot of kinds that are a little octagon. But these are a lot more true and accurate when put on a framing square. They tuck right in the corners. And let's see, uh, in this compartment I made it special for a block plane. I've got this Lee Nielsen low angle block plane. I really like it. It's a great plane plus it fits in the toolbox. And to any um, zealots out there, yes, I pull the plane iron up so it's not getting dull riding around in the toolbox. This back corner is kind of a catch-all, and I've got an electrical tester for uh, testing circuits to make sure I don't electrocute myself if I can help it. Um, uh, outlet tester, my how far out gauge for a four foot level. My recent video was about laminate chips, so I keep a couple dull ones and a couple sharp ones in that corner. A little non-abrasive Scotch-Brite pad. Some Straight edge razor blades, never know when you're going to need that. A pen. There's a hardware adjuster for bifold doors. A pair of Allen wrenches. A lighter. An extra straw for a WD 40 can. Go figure. Here's a poker for cleaning out little orifices or uh, releasing doorknobs from the hardware. That's what that came from. Extra long Allen wrench. Don't even know why I had that in there, but I'm sure there's a reason. Nail set. Pink pearl eraser. Got to have that. Red magic marker. Black Sharpie. Uh, red carpenter's pencil. With the lead broken off, that lead is really fragile, so I sharpen it when I need it. Paint can opener. Extra pair of earplugs for bystanders. A scraper. Razor scraper, that's not my favorite one, but it fits in here. I'm trying to tuck this extra set of bits in the corner. This isn't so necessary because I've got that big yellow DeWalt, but once in a while something runs out in there and I got this as my hole card. And this stuff all has to be in here just so, otherwise the drawer won't close. And I don't know what that order is just now. All right, the front compartments, uh, longer, bigger stuff. A pair of vice grips, everybody needs that. Uh, bit extenders, various ones. This one is for spade bits. Another pen. A few extra Sharpwriter pencils. Everybody knows I like those. And these are uh, Irwin extensions. These are great because they have a, a quick release end in them for bit extensions. So they lock together. I can put a tip on here. Or I can put a drill bit or whatever. I can really get a whip stock going there um, for getting out of a jam. So those are that length going there. Here's a Craig pocket hole bit, an extra long one. My other nail set. A couple more hardware wrenches for bizarre hardware stuff. I guess those can go in the back. There's the blue Sharpie marker. 
And let's see, oh, okay, I got two of my Craig things in here. I've been looking for that. Uh, and then this is just a regular tip extension. And then I've got a file. This is a Nicholson. That's a six inch, super handy file. I use that for sharpening my putty knives and tuning up door hardware, who knows? All sorts of stuff, gotta have a file. And then um, this Craftsman multi-bit uh, screwdriver. I don't like gimmicky tools. This is the closest thing I have to a gimmicky tool. It's got a little spinner here, which is nice, but it gives me a selection at hand. Um, and I can go from a micro Phillips to a chubby Phillips. Uh, small and medium straight drives and you can you can replace these tips put whatever selection you want in there I've kind of got a selection in here that's been handy over the years that fits nicely in the drawer uh, the last compartment is the hardest to pack but I've got three pry bars in here uh, these are the Kelly beekeepers hive tools this is the first one I got it's a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner than the new ones you get and I'm upset because nobody makes this one anymore. I've seen them knockoffs and the steel just isn't as strong. So I keep that um, old favorite with me and then carry one of the new ones. They're, they're a great tool, but I just like the sleeker size of that first one. But those are super tough pry bars. I can use them in pairs uh, singly. They make a good scraper uh, for stuff. Got to have that. Uh, then this little pry bar slash nail puller, I keep it because it has the nail pulling stuff on it and I abuse that for all sorts of things. I've got two more of these snappy, um, I mean uh, Irwin bit extenders. You can link these babies together uh, and really get out there a ways. What I use that for mostly is uh, setting pocket doors to put the stopper way in the back of the pocket. You can just link a bunch of these together and put the stop in the back of a pocket door. I keep coping saw blades on hand. So I have a spare blade, but I don't keep the coping saw with me. I don't use it that much. Um, and when I need it, I know I'm going to and I bring it with me. But the blades I would forget, so I keep those. I uh, keep a hacksaw blade for cleaning out sandpaper and uh, getting into tight spots. I don't bring the hacksaw unless I think I'm going to need it. I've got one long drill bit for who knows what. Um, I've got my electrician's offset screwdriver. This is a Vaco one, but that's the best tool there is for uh, removing the outlet plate covers. Um, somebody that does that all day every day has a little 12 volt uh, cordless screwdriver, but this is the next best thing. And it doesn't have a battery or a charger or a case or a limited warranty. Then um, I got needle nose pliers. I really like the channel lock stuff. They're real good quality. You can abuse them pretty hard before they give up on you. There's my side cutters. And a pair of Fisker scissors. These guys barely fit in here but they do. And um, last but not least is my uh, extractor nail pullers for removing the nails from trim after I've pulled it out. Those are invaluable and they're also hard to pack in here. Every time I redo this drawer, something comes out a little different. That should get it so that everything lays flush in the drawer. Believe it or not. Well, with everything switched out, I can finish the move by sliding the drawer back into the toolbox. Just like that. Yeah, that drawer needed cleaning out a little bit. And after I do the video, I'll make a new liner for the bottom of the new toolbox drawer. And you can see here in the back of the drawer is autograph and date when these toolboxes were made. 
a little bit more history there for the video. But I'll slip this drawer back in here to wrap up the move. Well, there you have it. The changing of the guard from Carpenter's Tool Tote serial number 001 to serial number 002. And there's a link to a dedicated shopper storefront in the video description below where I'll try to include as many of these tools and things um, that I use and you saw in this video. And uh, you'll see a list of them there. If there's something there you like, you're looking for, you want or need, and can't find it locally, if you buy it from that site, it helps benefit Next Level Carpentry, and I really appreciate it. So I've got a whole list of notes uh, here. I wrote up a script for the outro of this video, and uh, it'll take me uh, just a few minutes to read this. If you watch me read it, if I try to make it, if I try to make you think I'm not reading it from a script, I could take another half an hour. So I'm just going to read this. Unfortunately, there aren't any more of these toolboxes for sale. But if you like the video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. And tap the thumbs up button while you're at it. Engagement from viewers like you is the whole reason this channel is growing, and I really appreciate your help in that success. As you might imagine, I've given a fair amount of thought as to what to do with this old toolbox and haven't come up with a fitting fate for it. So please, post your suggestions in the comments below and I'll pick the one that seems most significant or appropriate for this old boy. Page two. Uh, Paul Harvey there. Uh, I've thought of everything uh, from auctioning it off uh, to donate proceeds to our local boys club, uh, sending it to a special Patreon patron uh, through a random drawing, thought about donating it to an aspiring young carpenter, or even shooting a video of it being flattened by a pallet of sod in belated recognition of its former brush with fate on a landscaping job, uh, but nothing seemed quite right. I know there's a lot of creativity in the Next Level Carpentry audience, so I'm confident that someone out there will have a better suggestion than anything I've come up with. So please, share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. If I pick yours, you'll earn a shout out here on the channel, and I'll send the winner a free Next Level Carpentry t-shirt of their choice from the swag shop at Teespring. Uh, speaking of that, I recently uploaded some official Next Level Carpentry logo tees in two different designs and a number of styles and colors. So if that's something you want to add to your workwear wardrobe, check it out in the Teespring link below the video and uh, see if there's something you like there. I was hoping that uh, the new t-shirt I ordered from that selection would show up in time to do this video, but it's not here and I got to shoot the video, so I'm just wearing a red t-shirt. Next time I'll be sporting the official Next Level Carpentry t-shirt swag. Um, anyways, any sales from the Teespring site help support this channel, so I really appreciate it. Well, that's the end of my script, notes, and um, the time that I have for shooting video today, so I'm going to wrap this up and uh, jam it out there on YouTube. Um, I'm not able to do any video work next week, so this will be kind of hasty, but I wanted to leave you with something uh, to bridge the gap before I get into the video that I hope to be shooting next, which is making custom casing out of pallet wood so I can get rid of that cardboard door to my shop. So I guess that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, seeing what stuff I carry around with me all day, every day. And this list of patrons on Patreon who find enough value in this channel to go above and beyond to support video production here by making a monthly pledge of support continues to grow. You all know who you are, but may never know how much encouragement your voluntary generosity provides. Building a viable YouTube channel is one of the most challenging things I've faced in quite a while, and knowing there's people out there who benefit from the struggle makes it more than worthwhile. While this old toolbox awaits its fate, the new kid and I had better get to work. So until next time, thanks for watching.